Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Kelsey. How's it going? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. So today we're going to be doing a Wii U buying guide. We're going to be covering the console, the hardware, the accessories, and some of our favorite games. This is going to be awesome. Let's take a look. So a lot of people consider the Wii U to be a failed console, but I'm going to defend it and say failed doesn't mean bad. That's right. <laughs> I know. So many of the games are amazing. Actually, if I'm honest, I waited only until about six months ago to buy one. And I'm part of the reason maybe why it failed because I didn't pick one up initially. Yet. I'm blown away. I've been playing the Wii, the Wii U almost every night for the past six months. Yeah, it's got some really, really incredible games. We'll mm -hmm. see how many of them make it to the Switch so that you can enjoy more of them. Right. <laughs> but it's it's a great console that just was confusing and it just didn't make a whole lot of sense and obviously didn't have the third party support to right. back it up. So although. I do feel like it's probably the best Wii out there because yeah. the original Wii had a ton of games, but it wasn't uh, a high definition console. Right. And, but this one component, has, but not component, but but this actually supports HDMI. And we'll get to that. But Wii games play on it; they look amazing. And so, like, there are a ton of games out there you can play on it right out of the gate. Yeah, that's very true. So even if you don't have any Wii U games, you can still totally pick one of these up and enjoy a bunch of the Wii games. Absolutely. Now, the first thing we should mention about the Wii U, because it's very confusing, is that both of these pieces right here are equally as important. You cannot have one without the other. With most consoles, you get the base unit right. and then you know video and power cord, but then you can use any controller with it and it'll work right away. Well, you can't really do anything with this unless you have the gamepad. You can't set it up without a gamepad, and tons of the games require the gamepad to be your primary controller, or it's where your map is, or something like that. So, unfortunately, they can't be separated, and you can't buy these in stores. They never sold them separately. Right. And if you want a used one from someone who lost this or, you know, they got separated somehow, they're gonna run you like a hundred bucks. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, that's confusing and annoying. And very important to know for sure. <laughs> yes. Now, so don't think that you're getting a great deal for picking one of these up for, you know, 80 bucks because you're still gonna have to shell out a lot yeah. if you don't have a gamepad. The good news is, is that there's really not that many models. You know, yeah. it's always it's not very very confusing to buy for because there's really just two models and then that Zelda variant. Yes. So there's actually only two models of the Wii U. There's the 32 gig one, which is not enough space, so right. that's what the Zelda one and just the regular black one are. And then there's the white one, which is only eight gigs. <laughs> that's really not enough. Yeah. <laughs> so to give you some perspective, like Super Smash Brothers doesn't even fit on a white Wii U. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I downloaded uh, the Fatal Frame game. Now I have the 32, you know, gigabyte version and it takes up almost all of it. It's like yep. 20 gigs of space or something like that. So thankfully you can use external storage, but the issue is while you can use a regular, you know, thumbstick or whatever, you run the risk of the data getting corrupted because hmm. the Wii U will draw a bunch of power and could cut power to it basically whenever it feels like it in the middle of saving for instance oh interesting so you want to have one that has its own power source and then those will work great for you so okay. you know you can support i don't know exactly what the cap is on it but i imagine you can support at least up to 500 gigabytes of extra space yeah that's nice so as far as the the system itself though there's really not too much to know about it i guess the thing in the back here to note is that it supports a ton of different video formats, mm -hmm. video modes. So uh, we mentioned that it, it's it's a Wii U, but also has a Wii in here. And so it supports everything from standard definition to HD. Uh, you can do uh, composite, components, there's RGB SCART, and then of course HDMI. So it looks fantastic on a modern television, which is really cool. That is really nice. Yeah. Uh, it's also got the USB ports in the front for plugging in controllers. We'll talk about the accessories later, but like I said, most things you'll be using this unless you want to use a different controller. Yeah. So we should we talk about accessories? Sure. Okay. So you were showing me the back of Super Smash Brothers. 
and all of the controllers that that game supports. I can't believe it. It's a ton <laughs> of them. So most people think of the gamepad first, obviously, right. because that works with every game. But the Wii U had, it worked with basically every Wii controller. Super Smash Brothers even had GameCube controller support. And then this is actually one of my favorite controllers of all time, yeah. the Wii U Pro Controller. Now, when I came over, this was dead. I've never seen a <laughs> dead Pro Controller. <laughs> These have 80 hours of battery life. It was plugged in, I just didn't realize the cord was dead, <laughs> to my defense. <laughs> I just, they never die. I know. And you have to I, charge it like four times a year. It's crazy. It's, it, and it's super comfortable, and you're right, it lasts forever. It's it's just a better version of like a 360 controller. Right. I feel like it's pretty similar to that, but it's got, instead of them being on diagonal parts here, they've got both analog sticks right up at the top, and it's just, yeah, it's just a which really comfortable controller. I, which I love, and actually, getting back to the to the actual pad, I love the fact that the, that the sticks are at the top. Yep. For me, it's super comfortable. Same here. I, I don't really know. I don't really get the I don't get the, I know, I don't get that. Stick yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so these are really nice. These are supported with most games, just because it's kind of like a game pad without the screen. It's mm -hmm. got all the same buttons and parts and stuff on it. Yeah. But Highly recommend. Uh, yeah, if you're gonna get a Wii U and you're gonna play some of the more action-y games, I would highly, highly recommend getting one of yep. these. But it also does support just straight up Wiimotes. Yeah. And you were pointing out that these actually say Wii U on the box. Yeah, and it, and specifically these are the Wii Motion Plus, right? Yes. Yes. So. Yeah, they, they have all that extra stuff built into it. It basically just makes it a little more accurate yeah. with its pointing and waving and stuff. So you can totally use these on a Wii and you can totally use Wii Motes, you know, normal Wii ones on a Wii U for most games. Some games do require the Wii Motion Plus, but there's also just little snap-on accessories for the older yeah. ones to give the Wii Motion Plus to them. And then nunchuck with that as well. Yeah. And then another Wii accessory that totally works with some games, not every game again, but it's the Wii Classic controller. Do you use this at all? I haven't much, but I need to. It's really good for all the like older eShop games. You know, yeah. It's, it's kind of the shape of like a Super Nintendo yeah. controller a little bit, so it's helpful with those. But it's slightly bulkier, which uh, again, mm -hmm. for my hands, feels really good. And it's got all the buttons yep. instead of, you know, it's got shoulder and trigger and all of that good stuff and analog sticks, which Super Nintendo did not have. No, <laughs> but it has the GameCube, or I'm sorry, the, the Wii connection here. Yeah, so you do have to have this plugged into a Wii mode, which okay. is kind of weird. So usually people weird. will just set the Wii mode on the table and they'll be playing <laughs> with the controller attached to it. It is pretty weird actually yeah, now that I think that about they, it. They did that. <laughs> <laughs> and then for just Smash Brothers, you can use GameCube controller. They made a peripheral that would attach four GameCube controllers and you can use two of them at a time. So up to eight GameCube controllers playing Super Smash Brothers and that is the only game they work with. But you Smash people are crazy and you need your they, GameCube controllers. I, <laughs> <laughs> I do not have that little adapter so I'll have to get one just so, you know, I can use it if I Yeah, don't. yeah, I actually have a couple at home. Uh, I personally like the Pro Controller better for Smash. I know it blasphemy, me, but uh, but it's cool. It's cool because yeah. most people are really used to that. They've been playing Melee and Brawl forever. Mm. So it's nice that they kept it going all the way. And then also too, we do want to mention that, what is this, the sensor, sensor bar? bar? Yeah, that to play Wii games, you're obviously going to want this. And sometimes it's not included, sometimes it is. It's it's nice to have. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and if you're going to be using the Wii motes, Absolutely. you'll need that too. You'll need it. And finally, the last accessory that I can think of are Amiibos. And you have a bunch of these. I have over a hundred and- You went amiibo like crazy. 400 amiibo cards, so <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot. But yeah, these are really cool. They're, there's an NFC near field, what is it? Near field connection chip, Do something hickey, like that. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> something with C. <laughs> connection that's built right into the gamepad itself. So you can tap these on here. They can't be in their boxes. They actually D have yeah. a little metal thing in there. I know, I was like, ah, <laughs> Nintendo, you <laughs> outsmarted me again. <laughs> but yeah, so they're used in a bunch of games. So like in Smash Brothers and in Mario Kart and there's tons of others. Oh, there's yeah. even some really weird games that it's used in, but it usually just gives you some sort of like cosmetic thing. Uh, they haven't done a whole lot where these feel super necessary, with the exception of my favorite game of all time, that Animal Crossing oh. Amiibo Festival game. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but they're but they're really nice. I mean, yeah. I just I love the idea of figures that are cheap and useful. It makes me feel less bad about owning a bunch of pieces of plastic. So. <laughs> no, it is really cool part of collecting. I've only I've restrained myself. You only I, have what like six? Yes. Although they just the, although I will be getting the bayonetta ones. Me too. Because yeah. bayonetta rocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we ch uh, check out some games? Yeah, let's do it. So normally when we do these buying guides, we try to come up with, you know, 10 games that we recommend to people. But for this one, it was really hard. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of games for the Wii U, but almost all of them that they put out were incredible. Yeah, absolutely. So for this video, we're actually going to do, what, like 16 or something like that? Yeah, we tried. And there's still plenty of great yeah. ones that we left out. Yeah. So there's 16 that we're going to talk about. We'll try to go a little bit <laughs> faster. Yeah. And the other thing is that the Switch is out. It's right. doing pretty well. We've already seen that there's uh, Mario Kart 8 has been redone, ported to right. the Switch. I have a feeling that's going to continue to happen. Yeah. But all of these games are still really good on their own on the Wii U. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this buying guide is for someone who wants to jump in on the Wii U and get really good games. And so that's kind of what we're focusing on here. Right. Okay. Well, do you want me to go first? Sure. Okay. Super Mario 3D World. You played this. This is probably my favorite Mario game of all time, which is so hard to do. I know. I know. It, it's amazing how every version that they've done is just always added something a little extra. And this is a fantastic game. I love the graphics. I love the humor, uh, the powers you get. It's one of the best multiplayer experiences in really? a Mario game, too. Have you not played it multiplayer? No. Oh, you're missing out. It's so great. So first of all, the power in it, as you mentioned, yeah. um, the cat it's, suit. it's a cat suit. And so yeah. you can do things like climb walls and pounce on people. And when you're playing multiplayer, you can, I mean, there's like friendly fire. You can jump on people's heads. You can, you can kill them, basically. <laughs> but it's nice because it kind of gives you a buffer. So if one person's dead, the other person can still be there and the other the person who died will kind of come back hmm. so you you get some some wiggle room and it makes the game a lot easier to really? beat if you're struggling with it well it's funny you mention that because i played and beat this in single player and loved it too so again you don't have to play multiplayer to enjoy it but it's awesome that they added that yeah and it's four players so hmm. and you can be like peach and in fact you can even unlock rosalina hmm. which is really cool that is cool yeah so that's a great game and now for one that's a little bit not Nintendo friendly, Bayonetta 2. You yes. like this game, right? I do. I love the first one, which just happens to include in here, which is really cool they did that. Yes, yeah, so the very first print of this included uh, a version of the first Bayonetta yeah. on Wii U. That, that's the only way to get a Wii U version yeah. of the first Bayonetta. I was very excited to get that. And then the second game is just awesome, too. It's even better than the yeah. first one. They really improved upon it. It's just a fun, ass-kicking, high-action game. I know. Game. It makes you feel like a badass. Yeah. Like, it's hard to to, to look stupid in that game, because you know. just, you know, <laughs> everything she does is just amazing, you know? Yeah, and you can get uh, weapon upgrades, and you can get suits, like, you can dress as sexy Peach and sexy Daisy and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, it's just a super, super fun game, and it's rated M, because there's a lot of uh, swearing adult themes yeah. in it, but it's really, really fun. That's cool. A uh, game I recently got, because you recommended it, that's Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. So good. Yes. All of the music in it is basically just the music from the original Donkey Kong Countries, but with full, you know, or orchestral, I don't know if orchestral is the right word, but just yeah. very full for the modern yeah. systems music. It's and, so good. And the visuals in this, I think, are just, in HD, are just like, eye-popping it was gorgeous and it runs really well and yeah just a fantastic game so it's much hard too very I mean, hard all donkey kong country games are a yeah. little hard i would say but but it's fun too because there's a bunch of stuff to try to find and unlock and there's a bunch of hidden stuff to, to you know it's cool now did you play the multiplayer for this one <sighs> No, I can't get friends. it. I know you need to, you need to come <laughs> over. We'll do some like let's plays. Yeah, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is a really, really good multiplayer game as well. It's really, just, just two player, but huh. again, helps it not be quite as hard. <laughs> oh, really? All right, that's good to know. Yeah. All right, and then I'm going to talk about one that was actually packaged with most of the Wii U games, and that is Nintendo Land. It seems kind of weird. I actually feel like this game, given a little, little bit more effort and time and 
understanding from people uh -huh. about the Wii U could have been almost as popular as Wii Sports. We had a ton of fun playing. Yeah. The footage you're watching right now is us playing the game. Yeah, so it's a bunch of mini games. Some of them are single player, some of them are, you know, two player, and then some of them you can have up to like five or six players too. Hmm. So it's really cool. They're all Nintendo themed mini games, but they're all really well done. Like we played the Zelda one and yep. it's a lot of a lot of fun to just swing the sword and yep. and shoot arrows. There's a Luigi's Mansion one that's a lot of fun. What was the one we were running around with the little I had to pick up the candy? Oh yeah, the Animal Crossing one. And that was fun. Yeah. And, that's... Then, and the balloon one was fun for me. Yeah. So there's a lot of games in here where you've got one person with the gamepad who's kind of doing something in secret from the other people <laughs> running around and th those are the best. Those they're are really the best. fun fun party games. All right, next up for me is Yoshi's Woolly World. Now this this came out recently on the 3DS, but it was originally a Wii U game and played this, beat this game. I love this game. It's such a great platformer. I, I love Yoshi anyways, you know, um, but it's got a great visual style. It's, it's balls of yarn. It is uh, fabric. There's a bunch of, of things to unlock and find in this game. It probably supports multiple players. I didn't realize that. <laughs> and it's got uh, really good amiibo support too. You can change the color and costume of your Yoshi. That's right. With the amiibos, so. I'm gonna have to bust open my amiibos and start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did do that with Kirby's, um, uh, the 3DS one. Oh yeah. Yeah. But um, just a really fantastic game. Some people find it kind of easy. It is certainly one of the more easier platformers, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's how most of the Yoshi games have been. Yeah, sometimes like. you just want to have a good time, you know, get through a game. So, recommended. And then definitely can't not mention Super Smash Brothers. Now, most people are still in the camp that Melee is the best one and nothing's ever going to top it, but I really like this one, especially for all the new characters that they put into this one. Villager from Animal Crossing was right. super cool when I first played this, uh, when they announced it and they had the demos at PAX. I was so excited to be playing as someone from Animal Crossing in a Smash <laughs> Brothers game, but it's got the Duck Hunt dog in it, it's got a ton of Fire Emblem characters, and they're all just, you know, the roster is huge now, and there's so many different ways to play with, you know, with items, without items, tons of new stages. It's it's a really, really good looking game. And you can also, this is also on the 3DS, but the Wii U version plays a lot better. And you destroyed me time and time again. You've been playing it for oh. way longer than me. <laughs> I, you know, I had an N64 and played the original <laughs> Smash Brothers, so I'm it, not good by any stretch of the imagination. It was, it was fun to watch you though, kicking some ass, it was awesome. <laughs> All right, next up for me is Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. I have to, boy, that's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> now, this started off as a mini game in, in the Super Mario game. Yep. And then they just basically made a full version of it. And I love this game. It's so much fun. Did you play it? I played it a little bit. It's it's interesting the way it uses the gamepad to kind of yeah. look around and solve puzzles. Also, you'll touch sometimes and affect the environment. But basically, it's a 3D uh, puzzle game. And and you yeah you do have to sort of manipulate the environment, especially like rotating the screen to kind of see what's behind you, and you're constantly doing that. Um, it's a, it can be a challenge because if you want to get all you know everything unlocked, you really have to to use your noggin a little bit and make sure that you don't miss certain things. But it's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it's a game that you can beat in a few days too. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a super long game, but there's yeah. plenty of extra challenges on top of it. And I like it because it's something different. You yeah. know, it's it definitely stands on its own. It's cool. And then I've got one of the few JRPGs that came out on the Wii U, but it is exclusive right now to the Wii U, and that's Xenoblade Chronicles X. Now, I'm a huge fan of the first Xenoblade Chronicles, which was on the Wii and on the 3DS, and this one is different, but it's still really good. What's interesting about this one is that you can customize your character, which is not a very JRPG mm, thing. Yeah. Usually you're like a preset character in yep. a JRPG, but it's the environment in this game and the music are what's so incredible. When you first walk out onto uh, Mira, I think is what the name of the continent is called, or the planet, you walk out and you will see monsters the size of buildings hmm. just floating on by and everything in this game is challengeable like there's nothing that you can see no monster that you can see and you can't eventually go fight and eventually hmm. be badass enough to take down even the ones the size of 
buildings. Wow. So it's really, really cool. It's a long game and there's definitely some long walking parts of it and there's a ton of little side quests. So there's there's some things that aren't for everybody in right. this, but I really enjoyed it. Good value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, you can easily spend 200 hours on this game. Wow. All right, another RPG that a lot of people love on the Wii U, and that is, I'm gonna see if I can say this, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. There you go. I got the sharp Yay. part, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a JRPG, and it's a mashup of Shimigami Tensei and also Fire Emblem, which is kind of unique. And what's crazy about this game is that it also, it, it basically is like this J-pop, um, I want to say like Japanese, like American Idol sort of thing, where where it's all very colorful, turn-based combat. It's stunning to look at. It's a beautiful game. I love the turn-based combat in it. It's fantastic. The dungeons, eh, not so much. You're kind of running around sometimes in like empty corridors and things like that. That's a Shimagami Tensei game for yeah, you. Exactly. The other <laughs> thing about this game is that it can be pretty tough like those games as well. That's a Shin Megami Tensei yes. game for you. <laughs> so for me, I was playing this on easy. Uh, I believe you can you can change the difficulty on the fly, which is nice. So if you're looking for some challenge, you can. If, if you want to dig into it and really learn the mechanics of combat, you can. Fantastic game. I, yeah, I've, lo I've loved playing it. It's really fun. I still haven't gotten around to that one, believe it or not, and even though it combines two of my favorite series. <laughs> <laughs> you should because it's, it's exclusive. Who I know. Knows? Well, I, you know? I have it. Just you know, you can only play so many uh, RPGs. Time. Year, right? I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I also want to talk about the wonderful 101. This is a really weird game. Everyone in it is a very odd superhero, like Beer Man or something like that. I mean, they're all they all have extremely weird and sometimes useless superpowers. But this makes really good use of the gamepad. So a lot of how you fight is by organizing all these people you collect, these superheroes you collect, into a giant weapon made out of people. Right. So you could have things like a whip or a sword or a gun and that sort of thing, and you'll draw on the Wii U pad to change whatever yeah. you know, whatever weapon you feel like using. So it's a pretty challenging game. I actually never got all the way through it because it's pretty hard. And you know, it's compared to Pikmin a little bit about how you yeah, manage Yeah, I guess with the, yeah, there's some real-time strategy yeah. kind of stuff in there, I it, guess. It's really unique, and it, for me, the controls were a little hard to, to kind of wrap my head around. It's definitely something that, as you play more of it, you get a little bit more used to it, but it's fantastic, and I believe it's by Platinum Games. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. They, they know action. Deki Kamiya. Yep. Uh, we've also got Super Mario Maker. Which, have to mention this. Yeah, which they also did put out on the 3DS eventually because you can't let this game go to waste. But it is exactly what it sounds like. You can make your own Mario levels. And people have done some really creative stuff with it. It yeah. really gives you full control. Uh, you have to unlock a lot of the pieces, but once you do, you can make these just, you know, Mario games however you like it. Yeah. And I also love the amiibo support in this one uh. because you can make people play through the level as whatever character is on that amiibo. So that can be anything from Samus to Link to Isabel from Animal Crossing. <laughs> All kinds of really weird things that you would obviously never see in a Mario huh. game. So this one's really fun. And it's not just, you know, on the front they show the 8-bit Mario here, but you can also do it in Super Mario Bros. 3 style. And, That's what I and think is cool about the it. new Super Mario yeah. Bros. style. So 3D, 8-bit. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's really. a lot in that game. It's yeah, cool. it is very, very cool. And then if you're not very creative, like I'm not that creative with level design, you can also just download a ton of cool ones that people have made off the internet. Which that's what a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the way to do it, honestly. Yeah. And then, have you played Splatoon? No, I, I haven't. I know. Shame. It looks fantastic. It is so good. Nintendo doesn't put out new IPs very often I know. these days. So when Splatoon was announced, everyone was like, what? Yeah. It's a shooter game but that is totally kid friendly but not in like a eh, I don't want to that's for kids way right it's awesome so you can totally shoot people and kill them but you're also painting the ground and trying to cover as much turf as possible yeah. so you can have people who are very offensive but you can also have you know if like a five-year-old wants to play they can just paint the ground in the back and they're still being useful to the team which is really cool to y me you know what it, it reminds me of do you ever play the blob 
on the Wii. No, I haven't. Which is a game uh, that you can play on your Wii U, but it's it's a it's a paint game like that a little bit. And so yeah, I saw that. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's like it looks amazing. Yeah. Very colorful. Very colorful, uh, competitive. You know, there are like actual Splatoon teams being assembled, and Nintendo's yeah. flown a few of them out stuff to do competition so it's really cool we're looking at splatoon 2 coming out here at the time of yeah. this video so i'm, I, I'm gonna get that as yeah, well. yeah it's so good <laughs> but we couldn't leave it alone at that we do have a couple more games we want to show yeah so there's mario kart 8 which has at the time of this video already come out on the switch yes. it's incredible it is so many awesome courses it looks fantastic music is great you can also use amiibos in this and there's tons of new uh, characters and stuff in this. There was a DLC that included like an Animal Crossing stage and you could play as Link and all kinds oh, yeah. of great things. So worth getting on either system. Absolutely. But definitely get this one. And I played it on that a ton. And then when it, the Switch version came out, I played it even yep. more on that. So it's so good. It's, it's the so best good. Mario Kart ever. Absolutely. <laughs> and we've got two HD remakes of Zelda games. Yeah. Now, I've actually never played Twilight Princess, but Wind Waker is incredible and looks beautiful yes. on Yes. I mean, these the are Wii U. these are kind of the, the definitive versions to play. They're in HD, they they updated the graphics. It looks great. I yeah. Mean, you should definitely if you have a Wii U, you should get these cuz these are these are amazing. Especially if you haven't played these before. Right. Play them on the Wii U with the HD version. Yeah. We didn't mention Pikmin 3, but we definitely should. Yes. Because it's a great game. It's a real-time strategy game, and if you've played Pikmin 1 or 2, uh, not a ton has changed. They did add two new Pikmin to this. There's a rock Pikmin, which can like shatter glass and that sort of thing. They're real heavy mm -hmm. damage givers. And then uh, flying Pikmin. So there's more elements to this. There's also a really good multiplayer where you can play bingo, basically, with like different items that you bring back. Really? Yeah, huh. so, you know, you need an orange and a cherry and, uh, you know, this monster's corpse and all of these things, <laughs> and, you know, you're trying to get a bingo. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's huh. it's pretty fun. I, I think for me, too, uh, I just thought the graphics of that game look amazing. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the whole environment. Absolutely. Is, yeah, it's almost like real. It looks cool. <laughs> it is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. And we wouldn't really be able to talk about the Wii U without mentioning Breath of the Wild. Yep. Which, of course, most of you guys probably got it on the Switch, but it's an incredible, incredible game, as you already know, and it doesn't look that much different on the Wii U. No, I've, I've watched side-by-side -side videos, and I mean, the, the footage you guys are seeing in this video is taken from mine playing that game right there. It looks great. Yeah, it looks great. Maybe the, a slightly different uh, frame rate, Yeah. but honestly, it's still a really, really good version of the game, and you got to play it in some capacity. Yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting to see in the future if that becomes somewhat collectible because it did come out at a time when the Wii U was technically, what, it was, it, it's discontinued. Yeah, and they even mentioned this was going to be the last Wii U game, yeah. at least the last Nintendo Wii U game. Huh. So that's uh, that, that's our recommendations for the Wii U. Yeah, it's a big stack. It is a big stack, but it can be much bigger because, again, I mentioned before, this also plays all of the Wii games, and there are so many great Wii games. I love that system. So many hidden gems, so oh, many yeah. like AAA titles. The Wii is probably the biggest hidden gem console. <laughs> it is, yeah, there's so much crap on there to yep. dig through, but there are some definite <laughs> awesome hidden gems in there. And so I, I wanna kind of mention that because they look fantastic on the Wii U. So should you get a Wii U? I think so. I think so, I'm, I'm really happy with my purchase. <laughs> It's funny because I had a little bit of trouble trying to get one because they were all sold out when I was looking for them. Yeah, so, they discontinued them and then, I mean, they were gone. They weren't still in the stores. They never really got clearance yeah. out. I mean, they were just done one day. To me, it feels like the Dreamcast is that, you know, the Dreamcast was a really well-made system. People loved it. The games were great, but it didn't sell very well. And I kind of feel like the Wii U may turn out to be like that. You know. But they did slash the Dreamcast price, uh, so there I were know. a bunch of uh, <laughs> no, no, and you're absolutely right. I, I was, you know, it's funny because I was shocked that it was still three hundred dollars for the Wii U, and it's like it never got I know. like a significant price drop, no clearance out, nothing yeah. like that. But the Dreamcast was dropped to a hundred bucks. Yeah, that's a good point. Is that Nintendo should last, you know, 
Christmas or two Christmases ago, dropped it to 150 or 100. It might have just been so expensive to produce that Could be. they just were like, oh, let's just move on to the next thing. This one failed. Moving on. Well, I'm glad <laughs> I have mine because I do really love it. And, you know, it's, it's a great little system. So, and hopefully you guys will pick one up and, and love it too. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Kels Lewin. I also have a, a YouTube channel, just youtube.com slash Kelsey Lewin, and my podcast, at Game Blitz Show. That's right. And we put all that down in the video description below if you want to find all that stuff. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and take care. You know, one of the benefits of doing these videos is that typically I capture the gameplay footage. Especially for this video, I captured all of it. And so when she mentioned that I need to be playing Splatoon, well, I went out and bought a copy and then I just got sucked into that game. So even though in this video I said I wasn't playing Splatoon, but I have been loving it ever since and such an addictive game. Actually, I'm really excited for the sequel that's coming out on the Switch. I'm gonna be picking that up, absolutely. All right, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it and take care.